Welcome to the gap. This is gap. They should have never gave you platforms. Dress like one of them, you know, R&B singers in like the 70s and 80s. You feel me? I'm gonna come in with an intro like them. <laughs> Give my whole damn self a hand clap. What's good with y'all out there? I'm your lovely host, Kamal, aka Magic, aka the Black Seinfeld. Hey man, once again we got another episode of the Gap, and I got the best audience out there. Give yourself a damn hand clap. I appreciate y'all. Hell yeah! If the kids are watching, at least they learning. You feel me? Woo! I appreciate all y'all, man, from the ugly to the beautiful to the in betweeners. And America's filled with a lot of in betweeners. I think the world filled with a lot of in betweeners. God damn. <laughs> Woo! For my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the goddamn channel booming. But I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. Sub and share for your boy. And hit me with a like Lord. and a comment. I'm going to say it just like them other tubers were saying it. All right? Huh. For my potters out there, though, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on SoundCloud, and I'm on Apple Podcasts. Across all platforms, all of them, all you got to do is type in either The Gap or Kamal Johnson ENT. Bam, and I'll pop right up. All right, we're going to hop right into it. And today's topic, we got to talk about the black image. Yes, I said it, the black image. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all here looking good, you feel me? <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Damn, this shit got a little big on me. It's like the old Steve Harvey suits. <laughs> oh my God! Ah, uh, God damn! <laughs> old Steve Harvey suits. Nah, bro. But for real though, we got to talk about the black image, and we got to protect the black image. You feel me? And like, also the way the black image is portrayed at times. A lot of times it's bullshit. Like, even if yesterday, celebrated Juneteenth, you feel me? Beautiful. Bunch of black people around, black kids running, black people just having a good time and all types of shit. But from the outside looking in, a lot of people thought they would have probably seen that and probably been like, oh, here goes trouble. Stuff like that. Bullshit! Gotta stop that. That's one black image we need to get rid of. If a bunch of black people coming together to celebrate things, that is going to be some trouble or some bullshit going to happen. Nope. Nope. Didn't happen. Grand old time. People was having fun. People was having a great time just at the park celebrating Juneteenth. That's what I mean by the black image. You feel me? Another thing that I've got to say about the black image is that we're all not monolithic. Whatever the hell that word is, you feel me? I just learned about that word a couple months ago, and I like the way it sounds. We're not all monolithic. And I know some of y'all out there is like, what the hell is monolithic? Is that a damn another one of them goddamn strains of the goddamn 19 thing that they talk about? No, goddamn it. I didn't know what it meant either, but then I figured it out. Monolithic means we are not all just one thing. We are not all one image. We are not under one, Giggity. you know, thing as a race. We're all different. We're all different breeds, different things. But what I mean by the image, though, a lot of times they want to label our image as being either ratchet or debauchery. I don't know, y'all like debauchery? What the Word. f? Debauchery, nigga? Is that a f character off the Lord of the Rings? No, nigga! Debauchery! Damn. It means. That is like, like, uh, uh, just like ratchet. You feel me? It's the same thing. Just uh, ugly, just treacherous. All the itcherous. 
Yeah, but we're not like that. Some of us is clean cut. Some of us, you feel me, a little more rugged. Some of us like wearing suits and jackets and shit. You know, I mean, some, I don't really be wearing suit jackets and shit, but I had to wear it for this episode. Some of us like t-shirts. Some of us like buttons. Some of us is loud. Some of us is quiet. Some of us like anime. Some of us like sports, like basketball and shit like that. Some of us don't like that. We are all different. We're not monolithic, but we all are a black race. And I'm tired of seeing that the black image that is portrayed to us out there, for the most part, is either us looking, they want to call it the thug look with our pants sagging off our ass and shit like that. Or we're like, we have this youth type of look. And that's where like, you know what I mean? The the, the jeans, they want the tight ripped jeans and stuff like that. I wear the shit sometimes too, all right? But some people, some you know what I mean? Some black men out there wearing the boot cuts, all right? Some niggas like to wear shorts. I like to wear shorts. And ladies, stop it out there. Talk about we got the hoochie daddy shorts on because we like to show a little bit of thigh. We are not pieces of meat, okay? Damn. Want to talk about our damn shorts? Goddamn you! <laughs> Look, but what I want to say is, we are different. And the image that get portrayed out there a lot of times is like the imagery of like we're like rappers or like you know the the the, the youth wearing clothes and stuff like that. And we don't all do that, okay? Hey, we out there, we doctors, accountants, scientists. You feel me? I'm a scientist right now. You feel me? <laughs> oh, you feel me? I'm out here. Yeah. We all don't have that same image. And the image of us, like, you know, as doctors, our accountants, our scientists, our teachers, Need to be portrayed out there more. We're not all f***ing ratchet or debaucher or living in poverty and shit, bro. We don't all have that image. Stop that shit. That shit get portrayed a lot, you feel me? I want some damn balance. Some yin and the yang. Message. Alright. That's why I say the black image is important. Feel me? We are not all portrayed that way. We are not all that way. We are not monolithic. You can tell I just learned that word. I'm saying it like a motherfucker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah! Another thing. Another thing I want to talk about imagery. We are not all trying to get the Eurocentric way of beauty. We all don't like that shit. We all don't think that shit's beautiful. I'm loving what's going on right now. You even see me with my fro. You feel me? My fro out here, all nepotized. What? Hey, Eurocentric way of beauty. Not all black women are wearing their hair straight. We got a lot of black women with beautiful dreads, beautiful afros. We got our black brothers, they rocking dreads. They rocking fros like me. And this is what I want to bring in, tie it in together, you feel me? It's this act called the Crown Act. And basically, it, it started in Cali. Gavin Newsom passed that. And, you know, it's a good thing he passed that, you feel me? And basically, the Crown Act is saying that you cannot be discriminated towards uh, getting, like, a job or participating in, like, certain sports, like, in high school and stuff like that because of your hair. And, yes, it's a lot of discrimination when it comes to hair when it comes to these places. One example, bro, is, like, the... the uh. The 16-year-old kid in 2018, I think it was in Jersey. Hold on, let me, let me get the correct fact. Yep, 2018. It was in Jersey. He was 16. And the ref, that cocksucker. Jesus Christ. God damn. Oh, Billy Goat face looking motherfucker. What? This guy gonna tell the kid that, oh, he, 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 was, doing, he was, in a, uh, was doing a wrestling match. You feel me? And I ain't talking about no damn WWE. It was the real wrestling. You know what I mean? Where they wear the leotards and shit. And they be 
That shit. They basically, the ref told him either you cut your dreads off or you forfeit the match. A 16 year old kid! This is what I mean by we have to play, protect the black image. Because us as black people, when we grow out our hair, our hair comes like this. You feel me? Some of our shit is kinky. Some of our shit is nappy. Then when we grow dreads out, we like to do. And y'all be discriminatory towards that shit. Or they had the two twins in Boston. They f*** with them because of their hair. Oh, we have like a lot of black women that wear their hair in all types of styles. They might go to an interview and not get the job because they don't have the Eurocentric, giggity, straight hair that they want you to have. We have to protect our black image. Like I said, we're not all monolithic. We all, we all, all types of sort, but we all are black people at the end of the day. Another thing, man. Hey, man, these <laughs> these white folks be taking our shit too. They be trying to wear dreads. Had a little Bob Russ afro. If you don't know who Bob Russ is, Google him. You feel me? But yeah, man, we get discriminated towards because of our hair, our skin tone. We are all not the same color. We come to black people. Some light as me. I am damn near clear. I am transparent. I know this. You know why I know this? Because I heard it plenty of times over the years. Jesus Thank Christ. Thank you for my friends to humble me and let me know. Just because you light skinned nigga don't mean you, gonna, you ain't going to get this roast. All right? Some of our black people is dark as the darkest as that you could, that could come. Shout out to my roommate, Jay Monk. He dark as hell. You feel me? But at the end of the day, we're all beautiful black people. And his imagery needs to be put out there. You feel me? Our hair grows wild and shit like that, but it's beautiful. And we shouldn't be discriminated because of that shit. And we need to wear our shit proudly, protect our black image. You feel me? And that needs to be portrayed more out there. I'm going to say this, and this is going to be the end of my rant, is that we are not all, I'll say it again, we are not all ratchet, we are not all in debauchery, and we don't all have the, the whole look where we're like we're in destitute and shit. We are motherfucking kings and queens. Study your history, bro. We don't start out as slavery and all debauchery and victims of shit. Who is out here kinging and queening, nigga? And I ain't talking about that <laughs> Queen Elizabeth monarchy shit in England, nigga. I'm talking about our shit, our image. Beautiful, black. More of that, man. Where I got my sources from, man, you know what I mean? The world, social medias, and stuff like that. The San Francisco Chronicles. I got that, we, you know, talk more in depth about the Crown Act. And the Crown Act, man, it needs to be in all 50 states, but so far it's only in 16 states. We need to get that shit booming because nobody should be discriminated because of their goddamn hair. And a lot of black women, and black men out there too, but a lot of black women get discriminated because of their hair. But it's black men too. I gave an example of the kid in Jersey, you feel me? Uh. Yeah, man. Protect our goddamn image. We beautiful and we not all the same. All right? Woo! All right. All right, man. Y'all know what segment we about to get into. We. I love this segment right here. We got to get into the sad segment. All right. In this movie right here. Mm. Spiderhead on Netflix. Now, all right. I, I, maybe, maybe the girl I'm hanging out with rubbing off of me because I this shit that she has a dirty mind, which I like. But uh, yeah, like I had a dirty mind when I was looking at this. Cause I scrolled past, I'm like, 
And I'm like, Superhead? Why the f*** they have something about Superhead on that? <laughs> if y'all know who Superhead is, you just know. <laughs> well, I was like, Superhead? What the hell? Now that we're like, Spiderhead? I'm like, all right, this might be a horror or something. Nah, this is like a psychological thriller. All right? And, you know what I mean? I, I, I gave it a chance. I was like, all right. So let me give you the stats before I hop into the damn movie itself. IMDb gave it a 5.5. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 45%. And I'm going to lump you on with the people. The people gave it a 58%. Hey, fuck all you motherfuckers. Because I thought this movie was splendid. I thought this movie was really good. Maybe I'm blind. Maybe I need new glasses. Nah, fuck all that. Y'all get the fuck up y'all. <laughs> yeah, this movie was good, man. Damn. This came out June 11th, 2022. All right. So this was directed by Joseph Kozenki or Kozenkai. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Damn. Shit hard. <laughs> Hey, man, good directing, though. Like I said, I thought this movie was really good. It was... This movie was a what-the-f*** movie. Every scene I was saying, every time it changed, I was like, what the f***? Or what the f***? It's going to be a lot of bleeping in this section because I'm, like, saying the F-bomb a lot. I'm trying to work on it. I'm like, what the... Oh, that's what... What the... What the... And you'll see why. All right. The cast, they had a pretty cool cast, you feel me? It had Miles Taylor, he was Jeff. Had Chris Hemsworth. Y'all know who the hell Chris Hemsworth is, man? Thor. That's all you need to know. He was Steve. He was a scientist. Jeff was one of the convicts. And then they had Jernae Smollett. She was Lizzie. And you want to know what? I'm stupid as hell. Because when I saw, first of all, when I saw, I thought I saw Jesse Smollett what? on the, uh, on the titles, and I'm like, what the f***? They got a small light over here? And then when I saw it, I was like, and I was like, are they brother and sister? And it turns out they are brother and sister. I'm so freaking stupid. They've been related the whole damn time. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm an idiot. Oh my God, bruh. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. But yeah, man, they had Tiz Herbich. She was a uh, Heather. You know what I mean? They had Bebe Bentacourt. She was Emma. You know what I mean? They had many more, bro. They had a good cast. This is a good cast. You feel me? And uh basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the, the quick gist of the story and then give you what I thought. Basically, uh Lizzie and Jeff, they're two convicts. That everybody that was in the establishment, except for Steve and his partner in crime, uh, this Asian dude. Uh, what was his name? Let me get his name. Verla, uh, Verlaline. Ver. We just call him Ver. <laughs> Ver, his partner in crime, knew the only two people, right? And they were all convicts. You'll see why I did the air quotes. They are convicts. And, um, yeah, essentially they were lab rats, all right? And that's one one moment. Of what the? That was a what the moment. I was like, this nigga, this, this nigga Jeff. No, no, not Jeff. This nigga Steve is a Dexter Laboratory ass nigga. What? <laughs> bro, lab rat in these motherfuckers, bro. They were lab rat, and he was basically using them for mind altering drugs. He was just ex experimenting them with with drugs. He was using. His drugs as experiment on these people. Human lab rats. What the? Psychological thriller. thriller. To some, this is a horror film. Alright? So, essentially, right, uh, they were inmates, and then you didn't know why uh, Jeff was an inmate down the line, but you figured it out. Essentially, he got drunk, and the whole drinking and driving, had his little muscle car, and basically the woman that he loved and her brother, they were in the car. He was driving. He was hella drunk, and he smashed into a tree, killed both of them. 
So he had two counts of manslaughter. And he went to jail for that. And essentially, this was a, a program like to reduce your sentence. Essentially, one of them programs, reduce your sentence. And that's why people was in there. And then Lizzie, you find out that she killed her own baby. So she was a baby killer. You know what I mean? So that's why she was in jail. And then you had other characters, you feel me? Like I said, you had Heather and Emma. And Jeff was like the main the main dude. Jeff and Steve. Steve, he is a... At the end of the day, that motherfucker was a criminal too, all right? <laughs> but he was the scientist. And he was basically uh, using his drugs and experimenting on these people as lab rats. And doing testing and all that shit. And testing them and stuff like that. And so... One of the main drugs that, like, Jeff had before, and he was like, man, I don't want nobody to have this shit. Darken flocks. Darken flocks. And I see what you tried to do there. I didn't like it. Why Darken flux gotta be black? What? Mm. I couldn't stand it. I was like, oh, y'all, Dark flux gonna be black, huh? <laughs> couldn't be the red one, huh? Couldn't be the blue drug. Had to be the black drug. Black imagery. I'm telling you, we gotta protect it. <laughs> I was like, damn. But yeah, I guess that drug like gives you intense pain and shit like that. But they had like other drugs called N40. That was like the pleasure drug. And then they started out with this black dude, and they was panning in on him, and like. He was laughing at shit that, like, at first I had to rewind it because I was like, wait a minute, is this shit supposed to be funny? Because <laughs> this wasn't really funny to me. But he was, he took this green drug, I forget the name of it, but it made him laugh hysterically. So he was just laughing at shit that wasn't funny. He was like, yeah, you know, uh, I just went to the store and bought me some cookies. And he was like, <laughs> then it started getting to some dark shit. It was like, Yo, like, the genocide happened, and bro was still laughing. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what this drug does. So Steve was experimenting on these motherfuckers. Human goddamn flab rats. Damn, spooky stuff. And then what happened was, down the line, uh, these drugs, when they took them, they actually lost a memory down the line. And you was trying to figure out, like, why were they losing a memory? Like, it was like a... a a memory lapse of shit like that. But you find out down the line, it's this uh, red drug called B6. And B6, like, it kind of uh, wipes out the memory because it that's the drug that Steve was actually using. He was trying to experiment with that by using all the other drugs to see if they could still control somebody's mind after all this. And what happens is this shit just wipes them out. And the f***ed up thing was like, Steve was using, like, remembering these drugs through bingo. Yes, I said it. Bingo. And that's how his name B6, I17, G37. That's how he's naming these drugs. Through bingo. Come on, Steve. God damn. This motherfucker right here. <laughs> yeah. But... Jeff was starting to, like, remember, you know, he was starting to remember little things here and there. And what happened was that, like, um, they made it seem like Steve was the N40, which was the love drug, was he was trying to, like, figure out. But that was just a decoy. And it shows that it also had the underlying tone that, yo, you can't just make people fall in love. Can't play God. You can't make people fall in love. They fall in love with who they gonna fall in love with. And Jeff fell in love with Lizzie. Message. Even though like Steve was having them do the the N forty drug, and he brought in like uh, Emma, and like they took the drug, and like they had a battery pack in a thing. It was like drug pack thing. You feel me? Like you remember the uh, um, the patch for cigarettes? Well, that's how it was in they back, and they were turning in a little like androids and stuff like that. So. They did the N40, and then he ended up smashing Emma. Then they did it again with Heather, which was an older chick. She looked like she was in a biker gang, you know what I mean? And then she was old, but she was she was ready to jump on Jeff Bone. She was like, 
I acknowledge. And that was the main thing they kept saying. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. They didn't know what the hell they were acknowledging. It's like how we is when we get the goddamn updates on our phones and we just like, yes, updated. We want our shit to work. We acknowledge. We acknowledge. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, bro. Like, he smashed her too. You know what I mean? And then they kept saying like, okay, we're going to have you interact with him. And basically, Jeff was like, I kind of remember having a, a good time with but I don't remember them. I'm not, like, in love with them and stuff. And then this was another what the hell moment. They had this big, buff-ass dude. Most look, He looked like he was in the Aryan Brotherhood gang, you feel me? Had all these tattoos and stuff like that. And like I keep mentioning, everybody's a convict, but they intermingling with the women and men. They kind of all chilling. They ain't really doing much. But he put him in a room, and I'm like, what the hell? Because this was the giggity room. Every time they were placed in that room, either some sexing was going to go on or some intense pain through the, the dark and flux. Jesus Christ. And so I saw they dropped him in. And Jeff was like, oh, hell no. Uh-uh, I ain't playing this. No, get me out of here. I know what room this is. It's the smash room. Get me the hell out of here. <laughs> and I was like, what the? Oh, hell no. And then, like, Steve was talking to uh, Burr, and Burr was like, I ain't liking this. Mm -mm. And he was, Steve was like, man, last time would happen to the last guy. And I'm like, oh, bro. They about to have Jeff get his ass toe up from the flow up. Damn! But, all right, you know what? You know what messed up about this, though? So, they cut, and then Steve was like, nah, we're not going to do that, bro. We, we We chilling and stuff like that. And then, like, he was like, okay, you're done. And it was like, what? And then it, it said, Steve was like, no, nah, I'm playing. Just sit down. We want to test some theories. And then it's cut to the, ne the next scene. It's like you, they show him like the, the drug happened. And then it just cut to the next scene. And then it's like they trying to have their little inside jokes on like, like Jeff is talking to Lizzie. But Jeff is actually talking about his past, but they try to incorporate it like some smashing went on between Big Dude and Jeff. I don't know if it's true or not. Y'all playing games. I was like, what the? What the? Lab rats. They, what? And then another thing that had me think it happened because Jeff starts snooping around in Steve's stuff and he starts figuring out like, oh, this is his company. He's not working for somebody. This is his stuff. And start figuring out like, Oh, wait a minute. Are we all freaking each other? Oh, Jeff went in there, no, no, no. and that's when it popped in my head. I'm like, this is why I call Spiderhead. Oh, you see the chart of everybody that intermingled with everybody, and it all looked like a spider web. And I'm like, oh, bro. And Jeff came in there and was like, yo. He busted in, uh, bro. Off and was like, yo, is everybody <laughs> everybody? What the hell is this shit? <laughs> Spiderhead. Yeah. <laughs> ah, come on, bro. <laughs> you twisted bastards, you. Oh, man. Oh, man, you twisted bastards. Oh, my God, bro. Wow. But, yeah, I think that's why they called it Spiderhead. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, but yeah, and then he started figuring out, and it's like cracking the case and stuff, and then the whole dark and flux, and then how's he trying to make it seem like uh like Jeff is going to love these women because he has like um he has Emma in there, and he's talking about Emma's going to take the dark and flux, and this where it take a dark turn. Uh, he hits her with the dark and flux, and like it's hitting her with intense pain. And Jeff could like he could be the one to be like, all right, stop it. But then Steve was like, are you in love with her? And Jeff was like, no, I'm not. And what happened was she was going out of control and she broke the machine in her back and all the dark flux just shooting in her. And she couldn't take that intense pain and she murked herself. Kapaya ended. Ended her own life, damn it. And then 
that's when shit start getting real crazy. You start learning about Jeff Pass, like I mentioned earlier. You start learning about Lizzie Pass that I mentioned earlier and stuff. And what happened was Steve starting to take the uh, experiments too far and had Lizzie in there that Jeff loved. And it is he was hitting her with the goddamn dark and flux. And that's when Jeff had enough. It was like, fuck that. I can't, I can't stand it no more. It's the woman I love. She in pain. It's dark and flux. She felt she deserved it. You know what I mean? But, mm -mm. man, all hell broke loose. It was like, nope. And everybody just start, he just started escaping and just like, with Lizzie and was like, yo, we need to get out of here. This is, this is not for us. And then Steve dropped the bombshell. And that's why I said they were convicts and Steve is a criminal because these motherfuckers been all they been out of jail. They supposed to be free months ago. One was like a whole year. So he tricked them. Steve tricked them. You can't never trust a white man in power. Especially if they wear suits. Jesus Christ. If he wears a suit and he a white man, you better question everything. Mm. That was the gist of the story. <laughs> tricked them they find that shit out bro and then they just run away bro get out of dodge get out of there mm. man and then what happened was the doctor steve he was taking the drugs too he was on the shit too and he basically was saying how can i sell this shit if i'm not on it myself that's what he told Bert. that was basically just of it and what happened was boom that dark and flux hit him they hit him with that dark and flux couldn't take it. It's over. Lizzie and Jeff got away. They always been they always been free. Damn, that was a dark turn. That's it. End of the movie. Capiche. Capayo. <laughs> it's over. Alright. Man, that was a good movie. I can't believe I didn't think this movie was good out there. Damn. Critics didn't think it was good. They thought it was trash. I don't maybe I like trash sometimes. I don't the freak know. I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, once again, man, that was a uh, that was Spiderhead on Netflix. Man, look at man, like I say, I'll never deter you or nor encourage you to go watch these films, go watch these shows, or listen to these albums that I discuss. I just tell you my opinion on it, and hey, if you if you mess with it, cool. If not, no sweat off my back. All right, look, man. On that note. Spiderhead, get the hell out of here. All right, y'all know what time it is. Why do, why do niggas do that when they got a suit jacket? Is it when they act like they're about to say something important? <laughs> hey, man, y'all know what time it is. It is meme, meme time. time. And all right, man, here go the memes, bread. You got some juicy memes for y'all. All right, and since we talked about Spiderhead and it dealt with a scientist, and I talked about black imagery. I got a black scientist on this meme. You feel me? Man, you know. You know how we are with our milk. We can't really drink it. We still drink it, but we can't because we lack toast. What? And it has a scientist right here looking at it, looking at something, and it has a little milk carton over it, Photoshop on it and stuff, and it reads, finally, 3% milk. <laughs> There's no such thing as 3% milk. It's only, they, it, well, I just found out it was 1% milk. I've been buying that. It's usually 2% milk. 3% milk is the same as a $3 bill. It don't exist. I saw you motherfuckers out there is going to put Harriet Tubman on a $3 bill. I dare you. Who the hell going to spend a $3 bill anywhere? The caucasity. God damn. <laughs> All right, here we go with another Caucasity catastrophe. All right, man. You know what I mean? It has a white man with dreads looking like Sideshow Bob. What? <laughs> you remember Sideshow Bob and Simpson just stepping on the rakes? <sighs> you know, you know. All right, and it reads, it's Jamaican hairstyle day at work tomorrow. 
I'm dreading it. Jesus Christ. scientist meme and we got a cat dressed up as a scientist got the little bow tie got all the little the uh what's they call it a flask you know what the scientists be using to put uh goddamn chemicals in together i think they call it flask or fumes or whatever it doesn't matter and it reads once i told a chemistry joke there was no reaction oh uh, <laughs> Like dad jokes, bro. Hey, I love dad jokes. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Little kitty Kimish up there whipping it, whipping it, whipping it, whipping it up. <laughs> Had no reaction. Oh my god. All right. Enough with the memes. Oh my god, bro. Meme time. Love it. Woo. Hey, man. Once again, man. I appreciate y'all if y'all watching or listening. I got the best audience out there. Give yourself a goddamn hand clap, you feel me? If the kids are watching, at least they learning. <laughs> Woo! Hey, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate y'all, man. From the beautiful to the ugly to the in-betweeners. Uh. For my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. Sub and share for your boy. And like and comment. I'm going to still say what the Gorge. Say, you feel me? It works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for my potters out there, though, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on Apple Podcasts, and I'm on SoundCloud. Across all them platforms, all you got to do is type in the Gab. Or Kamal Joss A&T. Bam! And I pop right up. For my potters out there, man. Leave me with a review, bruh. Or Brett. Leave me with a review. It helps out the goddamn pod tremendously. I appreciate y'all, man. For real. I like to thank my sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop gonna be in the damn description below. Y'all go check it out. Fire garments is made out of 100% African cotton. And if it look good on me, it's gonna look good on your ugly ass. Or your beautiful ass. Or your in-between ass. Whichever one it is. <laughs> On that note, man, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm out, bruh. You feel me? Woo! Protect black image. I love that. You feel me? You got to, man. All the white folks gonna steal it. <laughs> this was gay. This was gay. Woo!